I now give the floor to His Excellency Palama Gamba Kabodi, Minister of Foreign Affairs and East African Corporation of the United Republic of Tanzania. Your Excellency Professor Tijani Muhammad Bande, President of the General Assembly, distinguished delegates, I bring fraternal greetings from His Excellency Dr. John Pombe Joseph Magufuli, the President of the United Republic of Tanzania, who, though he had so much wished to personally attend this very important gathering, could not be able to do so to, due to other exigencies at home. He therefore asked me to represent him and deliver this statement on his behalf. In this respect, I would like, first of all, to congratulate you, Mr. President, on your well-deserved election as President of the 74th General Assembly. Please be assured of full support and cooperation of the government and people of the United Republic of Tanzania in discharging your responsibilities. I wish also to pay a glowing tribute to your predecessor, Her Excellency Maria Fernanda Espinosa Gashis, firstly for being the fourth woman in the history of the United Nations to hold such a prestigious position, and secondly, for her efforts, commitment, and effective leadership she demonstrated during her tenure. Mr. President, the theme of this year's assembly session is galvanizing multilateral efforts for poverty eradication, quality education, climate action, and inclusion. Needless to say, this theme is very appropriate and timely. It is appropriate because, as you're all aware, four years ago in September 2015, this August body adopted the UN Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, with three key dimensions, which are economic development, social inclusion, and environmental sustainability. Coincidentally, in that very year, in November, His Excellency Dr. John Pombe Joseph Magufuli assumed the office of the President of the United Republic of Tanzania. The new administration came with new strength, thought, and zeal for economic transformation, for the betterment of welfare of the people of the United Republic of Tanzania, especially vulnerable groups. The main agenda of this administration is to eradicate corruption, institute ethics and discipline in public service, enhance tax collection as a strategy to achieve quick social economic growth. These efforts are also aimed at improving the quality of education in the country, eradication of poverty, and tackling unemployment. I am pleased to inform this August Assembly that during the past four years, the government has been able to live up to its promises by delivering to its citizens in many aspects. In July this year, we presented a voluntary national review of SEG progress at the high-level political forum, highlighting our achievement in the implementation of SDGs both in Tanzania mainland and Tanzania Zanzibar. Mr. President, being aware that good governance is critical in eradicating poverty and achieving social economic development, this administration has taken bold measures to fight corruption at all levels, including establishing a corruption and the economic crimes division of the High Court. Measures have also been taken to remove wasteful government expenditure by improving management of physical and financial discipline, enhance accountability and transparency in the government. In addition, over the past four years, the government has been implementing various reforms, including the proper management of natural wealth and resources by enacting the natural wealth and resources Permanent Sovereignty Act of 2017 and the National Wealth and Resources Contracts Review and Renegotiation of Unconscionable Terms Act of 2017. These pieces of legislation are inspired and premised on the General Assembly Resolution 1803 of 1962 on permanent sovereignty over natural resources and the Charter of Economic Rights and Duties of States adopted in 1974 by the United Nations Resolution 3281. These reforms are, among other things, 
insisted to uh, enhance government revenue collection from an average of Tanzanian shillings 800 million shillings to Tanzanian shillings 1.3 trillion per month. Thanks to the new mining law, also revenues from the mining sector have exponentially increased from Tanzanian shillings 101 billion in the financial year 2016-2017 to shillings 335.18 billion in the year 2018-2019. As a result, the government has been able to increase its development budget allocation to 40% from 25% in 2015. Consequently, we have been able to implement strategic economic infrastructure projects and also improve social services to our citizens in education, health, water, and sanitation, as well as enhancing availability of electricity. Since December 2015, the government has embarked on providing free education in, primary, in public primary and secondary schools. Through this initiative, enrollment of pupils has increased by 35.2% in primary schools. This measure has provided children from extreme household and those living with disabilities access to basic education. Each month, the government allocates about Tanzanian shillings 23.865 billion to implement this program. In order to improve the quality of education, the government has since 2017 employed, employed 18,181 new primary and secondary school teachers in order to reduce pupil-teacher ratios and also build new school infrastructures and provide education equipment and materials. At tertiary level, the number of students who have benefited from higher education students' loans have also gone up from 98,300 in 2015 to 122,663 in 2019, with an increased budget of Tanzanian shillings 365 billion in 2015 to Tanzanian shillings 455 billion in 2019. Mr. President, on the health sector, it is gratifying to note that one of the main themes of this year's General Assembly session is on universal health coverage. The government has, through its two major public health prepared schemes, namely the Community Health Fund and the National Health Insurance Fund, increased the number of beneficiaries from 20% of the population in 2015 to 33% in March 2019. In addition, as of March 2019, 352 health facilities, which are 304 new health centers, nine hospitals, and 39 dispensaries, have either been constructed or rehabilitated countrywide since December 2015, amounting to a total of 696 health centers. Furthermore, the government is building 67 new district hospitals. We have reformed procurement and logistical processes of medical supplies and thus increased supply of medicines in our health facilities, whereby the availability of 312 essential medicines in the country is now at 79%. Regarding the energy sector, the government of the United Republic of Tanzania has embarked on a major program of rural electrification, whereby 5,109 new villages have been supplied with electricity since December 2015, making the number of villages with electricity in the country to reach 7,127 out of the total 12,259 villages. As a result, 67% of the population have access to electricity from, the, from less than 50% in 2015. In order to guarantee affordable and reliable energy, the government is implementing several power generation projects, including the Nyerere Grand Hydro Electric Power Project, which once completed would produce 2,115 megawatts, which is more than the total electricity country produced in the country. On water supply, about 71% of the population have now access to clean and safe water from 56% in 2015. In addition, new water projects are being implemented at an estimated cost of Tanzanian shillings 1.666 trillion, which is around US dollars 650 million across the country. With regard to transport infrastructure, since December 2015, the government has constructed more than 2,000 kilometers of tarmac road and expanded its major ports in Dar es Salaam, Zanzibar, Tuara, and Tanga. In August 2019, we inaugurated our new Terminal 3 at the Julius Nyerere International Airport in Dar es Salaam, 
and the expansion of up and up or upgrading of other airports in the country, including Terminal 3 at the Abedaman Karume International Airport in Zanzibar, are still ongoing. In addition, construction of two phases of standard gauge railway of the Central Corridor, totaling 722 kilometers, is progressing well and is expected to be completed in 2021 at an estimated cost of uh, US dollars 3 billion. Mr. President, climate change and environmental conservation is one of the priorities of the government of the United Republic of Tanzania. 38.12% of our total land of 945,040 square kilometers is designated as protected areas, which includes national parks, game reserves, and natural protected forests. In this respect this year, the government has established yet another four national parks, increasing the number of national parks to 24 in order to protect our ecosystems, forests, biodiversity, and land as part of environmental conservation. In addition, in June 2019, we have banned the use of plastics bags in the country and continue to reduce the use of fuel oil and diesel propelled electricity to just 5.6%. Furthermore, in order to reduce the impact of climate change, the United Republic of Tanzania is investing in renewable energy. However, our efforts have been constrained by high cost of the renewable energy technologies. We therefore urge the international community to collaborate in order to make the renewable energy technologies accessible and affordable. Mr. President, the government of the United Republic of Tanzania remains committed to promoting democracy, good governance, human rights, and the rule of law. Indeed, these democratic principles are guaranteed in our constitution. As I speak, there are 21 registered political parties in the country operating freely, and some are represented in parliament. In the case of Tanzania, Zanzibar, three opposition party leaders are in government, and one of them is here with us today. Mr. President, the United Republic of Tanzania has a vibrant and diversified media representing different expressions of opinion as evidenced by 152 registered radio stations of which only three are state-owned. In addition, Tanzania has 34 television stations and only two are state-owned and has also granted 172 newspaper licenses. Mr. President, in improving investment in business climate in our country, the government has from 1st July 2019 started implementing its blueprint for regulatory reforms to improve business environment in Tanzania. In fiscal policies, we have abolished more than 154 taxes. We are convinced that these efforts would propel our country to achieve the sustainable development goals. Mr. President, unfortunately, we are, we are witnessing an increasing trend within the international system moving towards unilateralism. In this regard, the United Republic of Tanzania once again reiterates its commitment to materialism and calls upon all members to embrace materialism not only in order to eradicate poverty, improve the quality of education, combat climate change, and achieve inclusion, but also in order to maintain international peace and security, as well as to achieve a just and a better world. Mr. President, in August 2019, during the 39th SADC Summit of Heads of State and Government held in Dar es Salaam, the United Republic of Tanzania assumed the chairmanship of SADC. The summit, among others, adopted the theme of our chairmanship, which is a conducive business environment for inclusive and sustainable industrial development, increased inter-regional trade and job creation. This theme is premised on the fact that SADC region and the African continent in general, despite being in rich, uh, in rich, rich in terms of arable rent, 30% of the world's arable rent, 30% of the world's known mineral resources, a large population of about 1.3 billion people, wildlife, a wide diversity of ecozones, and plant species that are extremely important, livestock and marine ecosystems, hydrocarbons and mineral resources. Africa, which is therefore not poor, has been compelled to be poor. Africa has continued to be a source of raw materials for other countries and a destination of manufactured goods and services from other countries. Ionically, Africa produces what it does not consume and it consumes what it does not produce. This must change. In this regard, Africa must pursue vigorously the path of industrialization, which will also create jobs for the youth 
who constitute 60% of its population. I appeal to the international community to provide African countries with fair and better terms of trade. This will enable our countries to participate in global value chain and increase the purchasing power of our people. Mr. President, the government of the Central Republic of Tanzania as chair of SADC would like to urge the international community to call for lifting up of unilateral sanctions imposed on Zimbabwe. Far too long, Zimbabwe has been on sanctions which have negatively affected its people, especially the vulnerable groups such as women, elderly, and children. These sanctions have also negatively affected other countries in the South African region. These unilateral sanctions against Zimbabwe should unconditionally be removed now. <laughs> Mr. President, this year the United Nations celebrates its 74th anniversary. Article 1 of the UN stipulates that the purpose of the UN is to maintain international peace and security. In this respect, it goes without saying that since its inception in 1945, the UN has recorded some important milestones. However, some challenges still remain. In this respect, I wish to refer to the Democratic Republic of Congo. That country has been in conflict situation for so long. Despite various efforts, this conflict situation continues to persist. In this regard, the United Republic of Tanzania believes that the support to the DRC need to be genuine aimed at addressing the challenges facing the country comprehensively and holistically with a view to attaining durable peace, stability, and prosperity. To this end, we pledge to work together with the United Nations and other members of the international community to restore peace and stability in the DRC and turn DRC into an exporter of peace and shared prosperity. <laughs> Mr. President, in conclusion, I would like once again to reiterate our support to the United Nations and the ongoing reforms to make the organization more relevant and representative of the global community. I thank you very much for your kind attention. I, I thank the Foreign Minister of the Republic of, United Republic of Tanzania for his statement.